Welcome back to Transcriber from Reddit. Today's topic comes from the subreddit X Lutheran, and this is the read that I promised you guys. It's the post that was created by user Don't Eat the Cookies Mom that's titled Women Are Prey in Wells Schools. It's a wall of text, so please bear with me. Left the Wells cult after being a lifelong member of 40 plus years, including Wells K through 8, meaning kindergarten through 8th grade. Nice to see stories and similar experiences as mine. The way Wells was practiced in Wisconsin and Michigan was nothing short of a cult and is particularly dangerous to women slash young girls. My last act as a member of Wells was sharing with the Conference of Presidents my disappointment that an adult, 34-year-old professor at Wisconsin Lutheran College was allowed to convince a 19-year-old student to leave her mother's home, move in with him, and marry him. This professor, Dr. Andrew Schmiege, faced zero consequences for his actions. He comes from a well-connected family that provides many teachers and pastors to the polluted Wells Synod. Young women that attend colleges and universities deserve to be treated as young scholars and not as potential sex partners. The Conference of Presidents and the President of WLC ignored my requests to protect young women and should be ashamed of how this situation was handled. See my email to the Conference of Presidents as well as an internal family email that highlights the fact that Dr. Schmiege preyed upon a vulnerable young student, removed the young woman's name to protect her privacy. Dash, note the XXXX in the internal family email. Also note the apparent secrecy around the inappropriate relationship. Please feel free to email Wells Leadership about this matter. Below that are some dashes indicating the end of this section and the beginning of another section. This section would be the user's email that he, she wrote to Wells Conference of Presidents. It begins as follows. Brothers in Christ, I am writing to you today in the spirit of Matthew 18 verse 15. I want to share with you the disappointment I feel in how the Wells has handled a recent event at WLC. As you will see in the attached email, a male professor at WLC, Dr. Andrew Schmiege, who is in his mid-30s, went to the home of a female student and felt that this was not a good environment for her to live. This young woman was barely a year out of high school. Andrew Schmiege then recommended that she move into his apartment. I struggle to understand his reasoning here. Was it the sleeping on a sofa that was intolerable? I think not. I have slept many nights on sofas without any physical or emotional damage. Was it the cohabitation of her mother in that home environment? That would mean that the sin of cohabitation is worse than other sins. It seems to me that moving from the house of one sinner to the house of another sinner, for we are all in fact sinners, might not have been the motivation here. In fact, since this young woman was receiving a Christian education at WLC, it might have been better for her to stay in the home and witness to her family. Instead, she shared an apartment with this professor and then later decided to get married because it was not a good situation. Is this a good reason to get married? Doesn't this sound a lot like the world around us? Let's move in together and later get married. How do we witness to unmarried couples living together when we tolerate this behavior from a cold worker? In today's society, a relationship between co-workers where one has authority over the other or holds a higher position than the other is frequently forbidden and often results in one or both parties losing their employment. So here we have a professor and a freshman student in a relationship and nothing happens. Sometimes we wonder why younger people are not receptive to our message. 
Well, it seems to me that when the corporate world has a higher moral standing than does our church body, it makes sense that they would not want to join with us. Side note, reading that again, because I've read it mentally over and over, makes me laugh, but kudos to OP for wording it that way. When the corporate world has a higher moral standing than the church body, you know something is messed up. I'll continue reading. Instead of pointing out this apparent predatory behavior on the part of the professor, the family, and several called workers came together to celebrate this inappropriate relationship. It seems to me that any called workers attending this celebration in July of this year may be in need of some counseling and slash or disciplinary action regarding this matter. Young women that attend institutions of higher education deserve to be treated as young scholars and not as potential mates and sex partners. That fact that this young woman was particularly vulnerable due to her home situation means she should have had even more protection from the predatory behavior she was exposed to at a Wells-supported school. I expect that the Wells and WLC will take action in this matter and that both will develop and implement strong policies to protect women in the workplace and in our schools. If this does not happen, I believe I have no choice but to make this a public matter as instructed in Matthew 18 verse 17. I look forward to your response. That ends the second section. And again, we have dashes noting the end of that section and the beginning of the third section. Now this third section would be the email from the mom, the mom of Andrew Schmiege. At the top reads like a normal email with a from Eileen Schmiege. Same spelling as Schmiege's last name. And then we see her email has been X'd out. Date Monday, September 14th, 2020 at 12 16 p.m. Subject, a few more things, dot, 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 to Carrie, her email's been X'd out, Lance Meyer, his email's been X'd out, Rachel Barnyard, you see that her email has her last name listed as Schmiege, but the rest of her email's X'd out, Nathan Schmiege, his email is X'd out, and then we see Jennifer Schmiege's email X'd out. The email reads as follows. A few more things I learned about Andy and X's decision. For future reading purposes, instead of X, I will refer to the young woman as Jane. At her mom's house, Jane did not have a bed or a bedroom. She lived with her great-grandma for a while until her great-uncle, parentheses, the man at the wedding, and parentheses, came home from Texas to live with the great-grandma. Then she had to move out. At her mom's house, Jane slept on a couch. Her mom promised to clean up space for her by the beginning of the school year. Andy and Jane went there mid-August to check the progress, and nothing had been done. In this context, for the rest of my read of the email, Andy is referring to Dr. Andrew Schmiege. To continue reading, they went again intending to clean up things themselves, but it was pretty hopeless. Andy said Jane should not live there. Dash, a mess. She has been sleeping on the couch at Andy's, which was not a good situation, so they made the decision to get married now. Her mom does not work, Dash has a live-in boyfriend. Jane discovered her mom did not have health insurance for Jane. It is hard for me to understand a family situation like this because I have been truly blessed. Her mom seemed pleasant for the short time we saw her. Jane's dad does not know that she is married or even that she was dating anyone. I think Jane appreciates all of you and your Christian way of life very much. We will pray for them and their happiness in marriage. They are okay now with everyone knowing they are married. They will celebrate next summer as planned. 
Love, Mom. That ends the post. Like I said at the beginning, it is a wall of text, but it is a wall of vital and informative text. We have names of everyone except the victim. We have Mom's original email dated for us, and we also have OP's letter that he, she sent to the Wells Conference of Presidents. I do want to make a note here because I didn't see any of the comments mentioning this. I did see the date of Mom's email being September of 2020. I know that, yes, there were COVID concerns and measures taken by WLC, Wisconsin Lutheran College, to prevent COVID spread. However, that does not preclude someone from doing the best of their ability to make sure that if someone is in need of a better living situation, that they do so without housing them in their own home, especially if they are professor and student, especially if they are unmarried professor and unmarried student. The young student here is female, but I would say regardless if she was male or female, they would still be vulnerable. Vulnerable to the professor who is in charge of their grades while they attend their classes, as well as her eventual graduation GPA. Having read through it again for the umpteenth time, I still fail to see what was so awful about her living situation, especially for it to, quotes, require, and I mean that with all the sarcasm I can muster, an unmarried professor to take her into his home and then for them to suddenly decide to get married several months later. If that doesn't sound suspicious to you at all, then I got a bridge to nowhere to sell to you. I want to highlight a couple comments down below in the Reddit post. The first one, made by user Perfectly Panda, states, they act like this was the only option. If they wanted to follow the precepts they claim, then it would have been more appropriate to work on getting into the dorms or something along those lines. There were other options. It is just an excuse to say it was a bad situation. In response to that comment, user Diet Mish, spelled D-I-E-T-S-M-I-C-H-E, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, says, right? Why not a dorm? Question mark, exclamation mark. Or, in all caps, anywhere else. So true. I do want to give a huge shout out and congratulations to OP. Don't eat the cookies, mom. You did everything you could. Thank you for posting this on Reddit on this subreddit in particular. And thank you for providing us, not just with your email to the Conference of Presidents to try and get this predatory behavior looked at, as well as including Andrew Schmiege's mom's original email. Please don't beat yourself up. When you get an organization that is as rigidly hierarchical as the wills, the best thing to do is to voice your concerns, protest as much as you can, and leave. And that concludes today's video. Please like, subscribe, share, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.